Hey, what's up everybody? So today I just had to turn on the mic and talk about something. This is uh, something that has is really serious and I don't think a lot of people are tracking this here in the state of Florida. Um, this is becoming a really huge issue and the issue is insurance and real estate. So in this video, I wanna talk about some of the serious impacts Hurricane Ian and the latest hurricanes like Sally have done to insurance here in the state of Florida and this is a serious issue and the governor is going to have to like step in and do something or some real bad things are going to happen here on the Gulf Coast and in the state of Florida. So in this video I'm going to talk about my thoughts on how insurance is going to affect real estate investing, real estate home buying, being a real estate owner, everything real estate whether commercial or uh, residential. So just stick with me because you need to know what I'm about to tell you. So here we go. All right, so if you know much about me, I love making videos about the Gulf Coast, Florida, life here, travel, real estate, fishing, whatever side to talk about. And being a real estate agent here on the Gulf Coast, I see a lot of stuff when it comes to having a really smooth real estate transaction. So right now, if you have a uh, if you're moving here or you are going to purchase a piece of property here on the Gulf Coast and the property happens to be an older property, a moderately aged property, a, a property that does not have a really good wind mitigation inspection and paperwork with it, if you don't have a new roof, uh, a lot of these things can affect you buying insurance and being a large part of the transactions in real estate have to do with a lender and uh finding insurance to close a real estate transaction with the bank, you, insurance is everything. So what basically what I am seeing here is if you are trying to buy a piece of property, uh, wind mitigation, wind insurance, everything that has to do with hurricanes and the loss of property, the risk being underwritten in these things is just through the roof. So uh, right now, like, let's just take $200,000 house here in Navy Point. Some of my friends are getting insurance policy quotes for six, $7,000. <laughs> their mortgages are going up because they're escrowed with the insurance. And most insurance companies are basically just coming out and saying, hey, if your roof is over 15 years old, I don't care what kind of uh, shingle type you got, it's got to be replaced. If it has any type of older wiring in it, got to re be replaced. I'm talking the paper stuff. If it's got galvanized piping, you're gone. If it's got, uh, um, if it doesn't have wind mitigation, being like the storm shutters and the storm windows and everything, hurricane clips, like your insurance is going through the roof. They're making it so hard to get the insurance and making you pay so much that it's almost like they don't want to insure here and they're looking for an excuse to not buy a policy. But they're still hanging their shingle here. And you know, and they're very picky on what they're wanting to insure. So I want to add this here that this is not all houses on the Gulf Coast. These are, if you're buying a new house, new build, good location, built up to code, new roof, everything is, is good, you're not going to have insurance problems. You're not gonna have this crazy, like, oh no moment. If you're buying you know, a house that's five, 10 years old, you're gonna be fine. You know, get a good home inspection. Check it out, you know, during the inspection process. But if you're buying a 1940s house on the water that has no upgrades and the roof is who knows how long and there's no permits and there's no way to track anything, you're gonna run into these issues. And it's gonna take a really good real estate agent, really good insurance, a person to get that property closed. So just think about these things before you start picking who you're going to work with, picking your real estate professional, your attorney, all these things. Before you put it all together, just know here in the state of Florida, and it's probably going to get worse, that these issues are going to pop up. So FYI. But I tell you, I love Florida. I love living here. I want everybody to live here. It's a great place. Okay. It, it has, a, I love the beach. I love the water. It's all worth it. It's just, Pick uh, your properties wisely. Uh, have a forward thought of insurance and the things that can make insurance uh, hard to get or unattainable. Um, and then pick the type of loan you're trying to do it with. And if you know, or you could, you can ask for credits in the transaction. You could ask the seller to split the roof. 
you could ask a lot of things to make the transaction go through, or you bind an expensive insurance policy for 30 days, you fix the things they want, then you close the transaction, get a new insurance policy. And that happens a lot too. It, the problem is getting the contractor scheduled in to fix it on time and it not draw out into a six month ordeal. Everything just like is making the transaction to, to the point where like, let's say your client uh, goes and, and gets its pre-approval letter for $400,000 and, and the banker's not taking into account that insurance might come back at seven dollars $8,000. And you get to the closing table the day before once you buy an insurance and they're like, sorry, we're not gonna go through with a loan because now they can't afford the property, uh, this unexpected expense. And, and it, 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 uh, I'm seeing it across the board. I made a post on, on my real estate page, on my personal page, and a lot of agents were really jumping in on it. I'm not an insurance agent. I'm just a real estate agent that deals with insurance on a daily basis, trying to close properties. And when you look at a house and you give it its initial look over, and I see a handful of things, I'm like, well, it doesn't really matter because the insurance is gonna be a real pain on this house and we might not close. And if we do close, you're gonna to have to fix these things afterwards or they're going to cancel your policy. But check in with your own insurance agent to make sure that uh, these things, this is correct. But uh, I see this a lot, roofs, wiring, piping, too close to the water, flood zone, uh, the lot shaped where it's going to flood, the house has flood previously, checking home and uh, checking a seller's disclosures to make sure it hasn't. And a lot of these real estate agents, I know these houses and I've seen them underwater and they don't want to say they've been underwater. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. So Hurricane Ian is supposed to have damaged between a hundred billion and a hundred and fifty billion dollars worth of damage, okay? And this is just a forecast. The water hasn't even receded yet. Hurricane Sally, Katrina, Ivan, all the minor storms that have come through here. Was it Michael that hit Panama City? Whichever one. Comment down below if you know which one hit Panama City. Skill saw blade all the way across Mexico Beach, Panama City Beach. Just destroyed it. I drove through there right after. There was nothing left. It looked like every tree for 50 miles had just been clipped. And so you can't blame insurance uh, carriers because if you look right now at the hurricane in devastation path, it obliterated everything. And now they're required to pay for this. I understand. But the, the lucrative part of Florida is its real estate. Uh, the whole economy is, is these awesome, you know, pieces of property on the water. And we get these, these apocalyptic storms once in a while that, you know, just wipes out everything. And, you know, they always say that if you want to become a millionaire, uh, go into insurance. Well, you know, for, for many years you pay an insurance policy and nothing ever happens. And then all of a sudden something happens and, you know, they have to pay. And I don't know what the government's going to have going to do. They need to step in. Like we got citizens, but nobody wants the citizens insurance policy. How are you going to have real estate in the state of Florida without insurance companies binding, you know, the risk? Uh, it, uh, we won't close any transactions. This is greatly going to affect, you know, people providing housing for others. We're in a really big housing crisis shortage. And there's a lot of landlords out there that are trying to provide housing for others, you know, in the course of rentals. Um, so there is a, a, a point in time in your, your investing career when you start to say, hey, you know what, buying individual uh, homeowners policies, insurance policies on a house is just not really cost effective anymore. When you get up above 25, 30 houses, 40 houses, these big landlords, you know, they have to say, you know what, I can't insure every one of these because my cash flow goes down to the point where it's not really worth doing anymore. So they decide to self-insure. I knew a guy that had 30 houses in Panama City and he decided to self-insure because, you know, it costs too much. And hurricane, and the hurricane came through wiped most of them out. He had them all in the same area, uh, same neighborhoods, and it, it crushed him. It wiped out half his portfolio. And he had to self-fund, and his cash flow for all those years had gone away. So my point of the story is 
that if we want investors to invest in the community and provide housing for others that can't afford to purchase houses, and now that insurance is going up, it's going to get even worse, that they're not going to risk their capital if they can't insure their capital. And it's going to create a really big situation that I don't think a lot of people are, are, are kind of tracking yet. That why would I put my, my money on the ground in a large way if I can't, you can't insure me that it's going to be safe? Uh, it's, it's a very interesting situation, and I hope we figure it out very soon. Something has, has to be done here um, for... I mean, real estate's going to get really tricky, and I and I don't know what the answer to that is, but I do know that whether it's fencing them, if you're going to do car insurance here in the state of Florida, you're going to have to uh, do homeowners insurance. I'm not one for like you know like the same thing with like rent uh, control and stuff like insurance control, but it, it's coming to the point where you can't close some of these transactions. Like if you have an older house, like on the west side of Pensacola, and it's got one of the four of the four points that is old, and uh, that house just almost can't be sold unless it's for cash, and you own it outright, and you just self-insure it. Like I don't, like that's wild. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of people here on the Gulf Coast that are gonna have to just self-insure. And, or you cut wind off of the insurance policy and you just do fire and, and uh, um, liability or dramatic, you know, catastrophe, you know, debris removal, like cash value policies. Um, those are, you know, kind of ideas. And this is where I get a little fired up about it because there are a lot of lower income, single moms, single dads, people just trying to get by, first time home buyers, they buy a property, all of a sudden uh, insurance explodes and their mortgage went from $800 to $1,200 a month. Or, or they've got something that's wrong with the roof and they can't afford a new roof. And then insurance goes up on them because you know the mortgage company is just going to purchase insurance it's going to be the most expensive one that they possibly can because in your mortgage it says you must carry insurance so now they're paying this just crazy amount for insurance they can't afford the roof their situation just gets worse and then now i'm seeing where the county comes in and this is just mind boggles me and says that hey we've now got sewer on your street it can no longer work on your septic tank even though your septic tank you know is uh is fine or the, the the drain line needs to be fixed can't pull a permit to fix the drain line you must now turn over to sewer and let's say you're a single dad single mom and it's going to be eight thousand dollars to get that line run out there oh you got to pay the tap fee because nobody put the tap in when they came through or that's now sixteen hundred or two thousand dollars and now you're at ten and now you got a roof that's still bad now you got a septic tank that doesn't work it, like you can really throw people into that situation where they have to sell that motivated seller situation where these wholesalers just come in and take them and there's nothing they can do about it. And now they're, they're out of a home, you know, they might've inherited the home or whatever. And now the, it, between the insurance company, the bank and the County, they've just eaten you up. And last time I talked to the County engineer and said, this is messed up. He goes, well, that's the price of home ownership. And that really fires me up. Here recently, I've been seeing a lot of people in this position where insurance carrier secretly wants to move out of Florida, says, you know what? Hey, that roof, it's 15 years old, need you to replace it. The roof is $22,000. He replaces the roof. And then all of a sudden insurance carrier is like, oh, sorry, uh, got to drop you anyways. And he just paid all this money to get the house up to the, the point the insurance company wanted, and he's out to twenty two thousand. He still the roof was fine, but this this barrier line they had drawn in the sand made that roof not acceptable for them. Seeing that a lot lately, that roof's fine, but it's fifteen years old. Got to go. And so sometimes, especially rewiring houses, replumbing them, it could be fine, not leaking, but they want you to spend that nine or ten thousand dollars to get it up to uh, where they want it, and then they still drop you, or uh, they 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 go out of business, and then you get a new carrier which has a new set of guidelines, 
And a lot of these guidelines are different across the spectrum. You know, they don't like this electrical box. They like that electrical box. They don't want aluminum wiring, even though it passes inspection or it's fine. I, I get it. A lot of people freak out about aluminum wiring. It's a whole different topic. But uh, insurance companies just said, hey, another one, crawl spaces. Now all of a sudden they want them to be uh, bricked in because supposedly somebody died somewhere in the ether from crawling underneath the house. Don't crawl underneath the house. Like I, there, there's a, it's getting to the point where the cost to upgrade the house is too great to appease some of these insurance companies and make the property still worth owning, if you know what I mean. When you underwrite risk into the price of the property, it's like let's say it's a $300,000 house, and your insurance is gonna be 8,000 a year, 10,000 a year, you question whether that $300,000 house is affordable. You know, So what is that gonna to do to the price of properties in the future if you know you can't get insurance? So therefore, all the loans are off the table. VA, conventional, FHA, USDA, because you can't buy an insurance on it. You know, with the older houses that had to have rewires before you could close, you can't get a con contractor in here now to rewire it. You can't, now you're not gonna be able to get a roofer for five, six months to do a roof because they're all in South Florida, you know, cutting people out of their houses and putting roofs in the back on it down there. Like, it, it is really a mind boggling event. Also, this goes to the Airbnb model. I'm gonna make a video on one of the bubbles of Airbnb, but the thing is if you are buying an investment property and you're you know, trying to factor taxes, insurance, your return, the whole nine yards, okay, maintenance, and you don't factor in that that, that Airbnb you just bought, now that it has to have a new insurance policy because you're using it as a as a cash flow property or a uh, investment property in Airbnb with a lot of traffic, uh, and you're having to pay more for the insurance, that property might not be an investable property. Like the numbers don't work. You're not gonna make any money. So same way with rental properties. If you bought it and there was no squeeze in between what you bought it for and the cash flow and you know the money it's gonna make, if you didn't have a good cushion there and now all of a sudden you gotta pay up for insurance, that property might not cash flow. It might not make you any money. Portfolios of properties might now be negative cash flowers. So I, I think, uh, especially these guys that, that bought these big commercial 32 units, 16 units down in Miami or Fort Lauderdale or Tampa or whatever and got them in a three cap or a four cap and they didn't think that their insurance could double or triple or get canceled and then the bank's sitting there like, well, Where's your insurance? Uh, we're either gonna bind it for you or pony up, bro. Like, calling it due. I mean, these are really issues that people are gonna have to figure out. Okay, so to wind this video down, if interest rates are up, insurance is up, we really, and we have to factor in the, the cost of it being canceled or whether you can use a loan, and that risk is being factored into your formula. Some would argue that some of these properties on the Gulf Coast, the older properties, not the new builds, are going to be worth significantly less. I don't care what the comps say, we're going to have the argument that if it's 300,000 and it's got old wiring or an old roof or non-wind mitigation and you have to have a loan on it, that it is not worth 300,000 anymore because it's gonna take somebody that can self-insure or fix those items or pay cash. And that's just the nature of figuring this insurance world out because we have become so litigation prone and so insurance prone in our society that we are now at a roadblock. So for my house, now that um, my insurance is looking to probably next year go from $2,400 a year to six, I'm going to either drop wind mitigation or drop the wind off mine or do a cash value or just buy liability insurance and self-insure because at some point my roof being, you know, only I think it's uh, 1,500 square feet would probably wind up costing me 
$9,000, $10,000 for the whole roof. And if I'm paying six or seven for one year premium that I still have to pay a deductible for, well, like, I might as well just pocket it until something happens. Me and Samantha will get out there with a hammer, go to Lowe's and get some doggone plywood and some shingles and lay them down, baby, because that's just what we got to do. Because I'm not paying $10,000 for insurance on my house that I bought for $67,000. Okay, <laughs> come on with it, baby. So that's my thoughts on this. Uh, I uh, comment down below your thoughts if you're having uh, insurance problems uh, I wanted to make this video to kind of like put my thoughts out there because I know y'all are, are gonna have the same problems down south as we were having up here and it's gonna be the next year thing and a next year thing and it could wind up being a really you know bad uh, uh, situation for Florida real estate but if you happen to be moving here or need help going through this entire process. I'm a real estate agent here on the Gulf Coast, Florida, Alabama. Uh, from Panama City to Orange Beach, Alabama, give me a call or email down below uh, and uh, we'll figure it out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you guys later.